Hi everyone, I'm Russ. I'm uh, Mark. And this is a Spirited Endeavor. Priming the Pump Edition. Yes. Alright, so tonight we're going to go back to Kilhoman. Yeah, we're going back to Isla. We're going Ooh. back to Kilhoman. And this is, I mean, look, we've had great luck with Kilhoman. And this one's especially interesting, I think. Well, you know, we've been on a bourbon journey here lately, too. Yeah. And this is kind of a, a like a marriage of the two. So they mm -hmm. sent over uh, weeded bourbon barrels, nine-year maturation in weeded bourbon barrels. Yeah, and, and they, they're very specific about weeded. They, they're very, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so, um, so this is Kilhoman. So it's you know it's in Isla. Uh, it's one of the uh, it's the newest it's the yeah. newest um, distillery on Isla. Yep, it's the youngest one. It's the youngest one, um, and they've been just killing it. Yeah, no, they're they're as close as you're gonna get as far as farm to bottle is concerned because they literally are on a farm um, so that brings a unique aspect to it but um, you know when you first brought this one home because I saw it and I had my handful of two other whiskeys at the time um, so I didn't grab it but Mark did fortunately uh, but when I first read it it's it's like okay so it's aged in ex bourbon barrels much like every other yeah, whiskey not unusual. so okay yeah. But they do specifically mention weeded, and we've had really good result with weeded whiskeys. I know. Uh, certainly, uh, weeded bur we sort of gravitate toward weeded bourbons, yeah. and uh, I like the uh, the orange notes and stuff that th those tend to bring yeah. um, in there. Then, and uh, certainly with Scotch, you know, um, one of the you know you get you know a lot of orange in there. Mm -hmm. You get the orange peel, the zest, that kind of thing. So I think this could be a good marriage. I think so too. I mean, one of the things that we found with Kilhoman in the past, specifically the Mockier Bay, is kind of a citrus note to it. So I'm wondering if this is going to build on that, plus maybe add some of that bready nature. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, let's get into it. Sweet. All right. Yeah, I've got to geek out about this one. This. I know. I'm so excited. They don't generally do bad whiskey. No. At least I haven't had one yet. And it's not for a lack of searching. <laughs> <clears throat> so it is a very Ooh. light color. Yeah, now they don't chill filter or add color normally. They do not. Um, so I would say that's the case here. But man, that is clear. <laughs> now the last couple ones we've had have had some sherry uh, finish to it. This one, of course, yes, doesn't. So, so they're a little darker, but this mm -hmm. one is just you know, pale, pale, pale. Yeah, very, um, very. Now, 50% ABV. Um, Which is also kind of cool because yeah. the bottle and bond, you know, 50% ABV, and they match that with yeah. uh, with this whiskey. Yeah. Yeah, nice oils on that. Man, oh, that yeah. really coats the glass. Holy yeah. crap. I'm not getting legs. It's just a sheet of oil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's beautiful. Cool. Oh, interesting. Oh. That is really interesting. So, I'm getting, I'm getting mm. a little smoke in there. I'm getting a little peat. Um, not, not a smoke bomb no. by any means, but it's, but it's just like a nice little whiff of smoke in there. Um, you know, I'm getting the a uh, little bit of that briny nature. Yeah. But there, there's a citrus undercurrent there too. Yep. And that's, you know, like I said, we've run into that with other kill almonds, but this one, it's, it's a little different. Um, yeah, smoke, not a, not a wallop, but there's smoke there. Definitely like a little bacon almost as well. Yeah. Um, but there was that first sniff or inhale, I got just a little bit of citrus, I think. Yeah, I'm getting a little something floral in there too. Hmm. Um, but... Yeah. It's, it's lighter in mood. It's not a dark, you know, whiskey as far as just being pissed off the world. This right. is kind of light and Yeah, it's like light summer. and bright and, uh, yeah, very summery. Hmm. Interesting. Well, all right. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, so I am getting the smoke and the peat um, on that. Um, certainly hmm. some uh, baking spices in there. Cinnamon. Yeah. Cinnamon for sure. That's really lively on the tongue, too. The the spice for this one... So, I mean, I've gotten spice out of uh, Kilhoman in the past, but this hits different. It definitely hits a little different. It hits uh, right up front, mm -hmm. whereas the other ones, I tend to get it on the finish. Um, but I think the spice is kind of the, the key here with this one. 
Yeah, this is uh, this is mm. spicier than some of the other ones that we've tried, um, and the and the smoke really comes to play in mm -hmm. this. It's not like it's up front and smacking you around and everything. It's just present and welcoming, and you know, like a you know little little campfire. You know, oh, second sips where it's at. Caramel, mm. caramel with the smoke on the finish, mm. a little vanilla. Like a vanilla cream of some sort, maybe. Oh, yeah. Smooth. Yeah, still a little bit of the spice on the, on the back, back end. now. Yeah. The, the first sip, it was on the front. Now it's pushed to the back. Now I get the sweeter nature. And mm. it has like a little lively, peppery nature on the tongue, too. It does. And uh, that seems to linger. Mm. Probably from those beautiful oils that we found in mm -hmm. here. So, I mean, that just gets in there and just... And just just plays. Hmm. Wow, I'm really digging this. Yeah, each time I go back to it, it gets a little sweeter, a little smoother. And the spice gets pushed further and further to back to the back, so it kind of evolves over time. Um, yeah, this wasn't very sweet on the first sip, but yeah, now I'm getting it. Yeah, very interesting. You know, my concern initially was that it was going to be a mock ear bay with just a. A slight difference due to the cast but this is not the Machir Bay uh, for me the citrus I'm not really getting the citrus on the palate are you no no the and, and the third mm. step sip on that I really got something smoky mm -hmm. I got something I mean it was just mm. it was smoky but there was also this you know beautiful vanilla that kind of went with it yeah um, Wow yeah, I think that's the big one for me is the the vanilla from the barrel, um, a little bit of the caramel, and then that smoke. Those are like the three predominant flavors for me on this one, and barrel spice. Now, I'm also getting, on that third sip, I got a little bit of like like orchard fruit, you know, like a, like a little pear or um, apricot, something along those lines mm. in there. <clears throat> um, I'm not really picking up the citrus that I got on the nose, but, um, yeah. but the... Uh, but man, that was really, really delicious. Yeah, I like that. It's bright, you know, for something that's peated and smoky, it's not dark, ominous, just moody. It's it's nice and kind of bright for me. Now go back to the nose. Check out the nose now. Because I'm getting something really interesting. I'm getting I'm getting orange. I'm getting like a uh Ooh. um You know you know what it reminds me of? You know those um uh, the uh, the chocolate mm. orange candy. Yep. You know, it was in the. Um, uh, oh yeah. Yeah, you uh, you would just smack it on the on the on the table. Yep. And uh, it would break up. Yeah, little it was slices. in the wrapper, and you. Yeah. But yep. exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm getting on the nose now. Funny you say that. I'm getting that on the nose, and I got it on the exhale after my last sip. Yeah. Just slight. I mean, it's subtle, just but it's slight, there. But it's there. Yeah, you bring a little oxygen in and inhale and then exhale up through the sinuses and that's where I was starting to get that. This becomes more and more complex as yeah. I as I drink it. Yeah. The the flavors keep shifting. This one's a sleeper too, because the first two, three sips it seems like okay, the spice is getting pushed back, the sweetness is coming up, but that's kind of where this is gonna go. And then you start getting other stuff like the fruit and that little bit of chocolate nature to it. That was that's really that's really good. All right. Wow. One one to five. Oh, I'm gonna go four on this one. I'm I'm with you. That's that's a solid four. Yeah. No, again, Kill Holman has not let us down with this one. Um, it's a little different than what I had pictured in my mind based on the description. And again, part of me was a little skeptical on the whole bottled and bond thing, but I don't know that I necessarily got bourbon, but I got some of the aspects of bourbon, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, I was about ready to say, you know, the one thing I don't get out of this is bourbon. Yeah. 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 But Interesting. I, man, what a what a what a great marriage this is though. I agree. So, you know, if you're looking for a scotch that's kind of bourbon related, I don't know if this would be the direction to go. If you're looking for a really interested interesting peated whiskey um from Isla specifically, this is actually a damn good choice. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's I think it's limited edition. Uh, mm -hmm. They they had a small number of uh, barrels that they uh, they used to make this. So um, it's it's available now. It's um, January in 
uh, 2022. Yeah. Uh, it's available now, but I don't know how long it's going to be on the shelf. Yeah. Well, if you like peated whiskey, I'd get on this one then. Absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. I hope you had a good time. All right. We certainly enjoyed it. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yeah. That